This video is going to be about the essential graphics panel of Adobe Premiere Pro, as well as the old legacy titling system. I'm not going to talk about the track mat issue. You folks can see by looking on the screen that there's a track mat bug. Adobe was able to replicate it. They stated that it would be fixed. This was over six years ago, so I don't think that's ever going to be fixed. That being said, there's reasons why I like the old legacy titling system as opposed to the new Essential Graphics panel. Here is the new Essential Graphics panel. It's fine. I don't want Adobe to get rid of it. I know there's people that use it all the time. The one thing I don't like about the Essential Graphics panel, though, is if I was to go to this particular timeline here, here is something that I did with the Essential Graphics panel. Now, if I go to the browse and I want to swap this out, I can't easily swap it out with other stuff in the Essential Graphics panel or other titles in the bin. On the other hand, with the old legacy titling system, I can take this right here, click on this particular title, see where it says replace with clip from bin? Now I totally just switched the title really super easy. This title is a little bit bigger than what it, than what this particular sequence is set up for. I can always resize it. But that's something that's really nice about the old titling system that I can't really do with the new Essential Graphics panel. I can't put them in bins of my choice. What you do with the new Essential Graphics panel is you right click on it, you go up and it says export as motion graphics template. It will show up you know, in the Essential Graphics panel, but I want more control. Another thing is I can't just click on, on this one here and see where it's used. With the old legacy titling system, I can hit TITL. I don't even have to put in TITL, just, you know, once you put in TI, it starts to find all the titles. That being said, I can easily find where all my graphics are used and in which sequences. If I click on this, I can see where it was used in the 4K timeline or sequence. If I click on this one here, it was used in the 4K two different places. So let me go hit the 4K. There's the one place it was used. Let me click on here and here's the other place that that title was used. Not that I'm really doing anything right here. I just want people to see the power of the old legacy titling system over the essential graphics panel. If we were to close some of these as well, and if I was to go into this particular title and hit drone, there we see it goes to where it was used. If I go into this particular thing, 1920 by 1080, it will open up the 1920 by 1080 timeline. It goes right to where that graphics was used. Like I said, I'll go to this 4K, go to 4K, and it's right exactly where it was used. This is a really nice feature to have. I don't want to be without this particular feature. Now, I know some people are going to say, I don't have this video usage. You have to enable it. If we go into the metadata options, you'll have the chance to enable it. Here's all the metadata display options. There's literally hundreds, if not thousands, of different metadata fields that you can have enabled or disabled with Premiere Pro. The video usage and audio usage comes under Premiere Pro Project Metadata. If we scroll down, we see video and audio usage. I have those selected. You can add your own metadata fields as well. I'm going to click out of here because we already have it set up. If I hit the tilde key, you know, we can see all the different metadata fields that I have selected. This really isn't exactly how I would edit usually, but for the purpose of this video, it's just fine. So that's the power of the old legacy titling system. I want to let people know I'm going to go to this one where I only used it once. And it, like I said, it's just so cool to go right to it. I am going to say that instead of listing all the different sequences and timelines it was used in, it would be great if you had the option to list all of them or if there was a way where you could click it and only show the sequences or timelines that are open. So if you had like five different sequences and you only had two open, it would only show where it is on those two because you might be trying to make a comparison between two different sequences. But having said that, I want to double click on this. And whenever you open this up, a lot of times it comes up all willy nilly and you have to resize everything. And Adobe is aware of this. They should fix this. 
we used to have a template for the old legacy titling system. They need to bring that stuff back because the new essential graphics panel can't do a lot of the same stuff that the old legacy titling system could do. I want to let people know that this looks 3D. A lot of people are sitting there saying, hey, wow, you got a, a real true 3D text within Premiere Pro. We can do more than that. I can add the inner stroke. And some people might say, oh, that looks pretty cool. I can take the inner stroke and make it a little bit bigger if I want to. I can also bring down the transparency. And now we have something that looks like a totally different font. You can fake this kind of look with the Essential Graphics panel. It was just so much easier to do with the old legacy titling system. I'm making this video in hopes to make Adobe Premiere Pro a lot better editing system than what it currently is. I don't mind the Essential Graphics panel. I do want them to add all the features in the Essential Graphics panel that was in the old legacy titling system. But before they do anything else, we have to have the option to put the Essential Graphics panel graphics into bins. We've got to be able to select which bin we want it to go in. I would like to think that, let me get rid of this. I would like to think that like whatever bin is selected, if we right click it by default save, it would go right into that bin. I need to have Adobe set up something like that. Without that feature, I'm not gonna use the new Essential Graphics Panel. I can use the Essential Graphics Panel to do some of my motion graphics, you could say. I don't have to have them all super high end and have them all use the old legacy titling system, but I'm not gonna use the Essential Graphics Panel, like I said, until I can select what bin I want my Essential Graphics Panel you know, motion graphics template to go into. I do like the fact that with the Adobe software, like I stated, I can right click on a clip and I can replace with a clip from bin. That's nice to be able to do that. Another cool thing about the way the titles work with Adobe, the fact that you can find them in different sequences, you know, really super easy. It makes it helpful when you're doing work for a client or even if I'm doing YouTube videos. If I'm doing a video about computers and I'm talking about RAM, hard drives, motherboards, stuff like that. I can find out where I am in the clip really easy. You know, I can see, you know, titles that are motherboard, RAM, stuff like that. And once again, you just go to it, you go where you need to go and you can see where it is in all the sequences without being able to find out where my titles are in the sequences or timeline, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty much useless. We have to have the feature, you know, to right click on something that was done with the essential graphics panel it just have like a save option where it saves it in the selected folder we have, whether it be this folder or this folder. There is one thing I like about the new Essential Graphics panel over the old legacy system, and that's if you double click, you have this like pop-up that comes up. Like I said, Adobe is supposed to fix this where we don't have to constantly keep resizing it. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but you have this little like preview window within the titling system itself that always has to pop up. Where with the new way it works, instead of having that pop up, you're gonna type right on the program monitor of Premiere Pro. I do think that's kind of cool, but otherwise I like everything else about the old legacy system as opposed to this essential graphics panel. If I click on this again, it would be cool if we had all these panels here, if we could just like dock them like right here and type right on the program monitor. I hope Adobe will look at the old legacy title a little bit closer and maybe let people know that they're gonna continue working on it rather than making everybody switch to the essential graphics panel because I really don't like the essential graphics panel all that much. It can do some cool stuff, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't want them to get rid of it, but hopefully this will show the importance of the old legacy title.